Midweek Mix Strawberries and Cream Festival. We're about to interview Kano with this very nice prop. That's our Twitter and everything there. Kano's on stage right now performing P's and Q's, so we're going to grab him when he comes off and get a chat with him. He's just come off stage. I am standing next to the GOAT. <laughs> there's, there's no joke about it. You are the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Kano, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm trying to get some curry goat in a minute. Some curry goat? Is that your flavour on these festival days? Uh, no, I've had a fry up this morning. It's not too good. 2016 has been a cornerstone year for you. Six albums, uh, six years, sorry, since your last album. Yeah. This is just a crazy year for you. The, the album will go down as a classic. Yeah. Would you have changed anything in regards to singles, the campaign? Uh, of this campaign, no, no, definitely. I think it was... Um, it's been a great rollout so far, you know what I mean? Everything we've done. Um, I go back to releasing like Flow of the Year. Yeah. And this was just all independently and then doing um, How and New Banger, then doing Garrett Skank with just a fan made video. All of that stuff, man. I think that was definitely key to the success of this record. Just interacting with fans and just, you know, everyone's got ownership of this. This is yeah. not just my album. A lot of personal stories that. have gone I into this, that. but now it's like, it's ours, man. And it's a thing that lives on. I speak to people every day. Like, I had a situation with my brother when you were speaking about in that song or in Strangers. I made up with my friend, and it's just like this album has done so much for me, and you know, a lot for people close to me as well. I love that. Now, as we know, you've got a very busy festival season. I know you're going to Manchester literally as soon as we finish this. Yeah. Um, now that the album's finished. Are you going to be concentrating on music? Are you back in the studio? Or are you on the acting thing from, for the rest um, of the year? Do you know what? I intend to jump back in the studio because. I feel energized, I feel, you know, if I like the vibe and the energy off of those people, well, I want to translate that into the studio, so I, want, I don't want to wait too long. I'm definitely not going to wait six years. Please don't wait six years for us. That's just, yeah, yeah. it's teasing, it's horrible yeah, to wait yeah. six years. Hopefully I'll get in the studio soon and then, you know, we'll see what happens. Love that. Now, I've been doing my research. Back in 2010, Mr. Sean Carter, a.k.a. Jay-Z, once mentioned you in an interview with DJ Semtex. This was years before Drake or Kanye ever mentioned anyone. I feel like people have forgot that. Yeah, yeah. People, people remember what they want to remember. But, um, no, it was a... It was cool, man. He gave me the opportunity to support him on my uh, on his UK tour. I think it was maybe 2007 or something like that. And um, yeah, it's just like said nice things ever since. You know, every time I meet him, it's it's cool. And he's like, come on, that's that's Jigger, yeah. someone I look up to and I have for a long time in music. You know what I mean? When me and my friends are talking about the best ever fire in the booth. Your name gets brought up a lot. I want to know whether you, you, you're competitive about that because obviously I know Avelino and Rich, they're also in the conversation. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what's the situation there? What's the situation? Nah, it's, all, it's all good. But I was never going to do one. Like Charlie kept asking me every uh, when are you going to do one? And I thought, you know what? I was dropping the album. I thought, it really had a little personal conversation with me, Ghetto, Gigs, and uh, Rich. We were having a little banter. Yeah. And I was the only one that ain't done a fight in the booth, and they was kind of. It was kind of throwing digs at me. Yeah. And I thought, right, let me go and do something here. But yeah, if I was going to do it, I was going to do it properly, you know what I mean? I weren't going to go and just do it, any old thing. But, I mean, Rich is like an amazing MC, isn't it? Like, he's so, so, so sick. And, um, yeah, just to be in the convo is good enough for me. This might cause a bit of controversy, but I want to know who your top three friends are in the industry. Top three friends in the industry? Don't, don't upset anyone. Probably Ghetto. Um, Bashi and Giggs. Ghetto Bashi and Giggs, you heard it here first. I'm a bit of a Brit, Brit pop head. And when yeah. I see the, the Damon Albarn collaboration, I knew that you and him went way back. But yeah. can you just explain how that sort of collaboration came about? Was it organic? How did he get into your music? It came about, well, firstly, I, I, I reached out to him in 2007 yeah. to work on um, a song for myself. Got in the studio, we, we done that, you know what I mean? He listened to my music. I didn't even know him from Blur. I went, I knew Blur, but I didn't know yeah. the guy that made Gorillaz was the same guy that made Blur, and I was just a fan of the Gorillaz. So we just linked up through that. Then that led to me working with him and doing some of the Africa Express gigs that he'd done. We went to Nigeria, went to Ethiopia, and just, you know, got to know him. Then I ended up working on the Gorillaz album, and we done a world tour. So we tour for like, like a year, you know, America, Australia, everywhere. And in that time, you get to know someone well. So with me and him, it's just like a friendship thing, you know what I mean? And we like working to get together, we respect each other. So um, yeah, when it came around to this record, uh, I, used to, I, I used to go over to him and just play him stuff, even if it weren't for him, just like, 
I just, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And one day he was like, I would love to be a part of that song, which is Deep Blues. And that's how it happened. So, yeah, man. Love that. I'm Alex from Westside TV. The English, the England game is happening later, of course. Yeah, 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 I wanted to see if how many kick-ups you could do. So let's throw the ball at him. There's his first touch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Too easy. Oh! Kano for Westside TV. This is Alex. This is Alex. Let me. Let's. Just, let, we're gonna get him to sign the poster for the midweek mix. Kenny, thank you very much. You're a legend. Thank you so much. Can we just grab a quick pick here?